Let's get Nestle to set up shop on Mars. They'll steal all the water from the Earth and put it on Mars. Oh, man. That's Nestle's genius. so good at getting water out of things. <laughs> yeah. We should, we should send Nestle to the moon. The whole corporation. <laughs> Words about books, Ben. Words about books, I, Nate. I'm Nate, you're Ben. This week, we're going to be discussing a sci-fi thriller type thing where everyone comes together, and it's it's a little messy, and um, I don't know I don't know how to feel about it. Of course, I'm talking about Hillary 2024. Oh, God. So I'm hitting the road to earn your vote. How do you feel about having another Clinton in the White House, Ben? I did not have sexual relations with that woman. It's not the worst thing that's probably going to happen to the White House in the next couple of years. I voted for Hillary. All the joking uh, I do, all the joking we do about Hillary Clinton on the podcast, please know, I voted for Hillary. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. in the primary. God no, not in the primary. But No, no. <laughs> Bernie all the way. We haven't even mentioned the book. We're talking about The Deep Sky by Yume Kitase. Yeah, we sure are. This is voted on by our patrons. So if you yeah, want to get it fault. on this action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben, this is my fault. ben selected four <laughs> authors with new books. And uh, he was like, hey, here you go. And to be fair, I looked at all their descriptions and thought, these are all pretty good choices. I'm sure we'll be fine. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna have to give you a. Let's, we're gonna go in order about the author. It's gonna be very short. I don't know much about her. Um, Yume Kitase is uh, a half Japanese American who has been writing. Uh, speculative fiction short stories since 2015 published in a variety of literary magazines. She actually has another book coming out this June and I think she works in New York city politics. Hillary uh, 2024. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> look again, this isn't look, I, I'm sure I would vote for you Kitase to be the president because again, it couldn't possibly be the worst thing that would have happened to the presidency <laughs> in the last 20 years. She's fine. I don't have a problem with her. The book. Okay. It's a debut novel. That was kind yeah. of the point. New year, new author. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And we're going to we're gonna have some problems with this book. Yeah. But it's in a weird spot because I want to like it and like I genuinely enjoy large parts of it it does certain things very well it does certain things very bad it it's like a million books in one book yeah i could so I, I could agree with that <laughs> i tried to note down all the themes that this 400 page <laughs> book is trying to tackle <laughs> all right uh we got a murder mystery in space Okay, that was an easy one. We've got a sci-fi generation ship crew. We've got uh, a, uh, something, something, some some statement about virtual reality and personal bubbles. Yeah, that's true. Uh, like a, a, a dark-ish academia slash Ender's Game training montage <laughs> school. <laughs> We have what would happen if the Alexa machine and Clippy from Microsoft Word were combined and just constantly giving you facts about things. That's not a theme, I guess. Uh, your turn. <laughs> uh, <laughs> co commentary on modern uh, American political tensions. Commentary Com on international conflict. Commentary Mothers. on uh, the difficulty of breathing underwater. <laughs> Mothers and daughters. Pregnancy in general? Question mark? <laughs> <laughs> it's, there's a lot of pregnancy. We'll talk about it. Uh, and uh, wh whatever, whatever Luis was. I don't know what that that's supposed to be, but like, 
You know that meme of like a mother holding a child while another child's struggling and then a skeleton at the bottom? <laughs> that I I don't I mean there needs to be more kids in that pool, but that skeleton is Luis. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> so there's environmental environmental oh yes in, yeah. environmental collapse yeah um uh, colonizing uh, elon musk uh, but a girl e- elon musk yeah but a girl um so these are things that i don't all of these things i, I don't think it does particularly well because it's trying yeah. to do so many of them. Because it's trying like to do all of them at the same time. <laughs> there's something here. I, I like it. One thing it does very well is uh, the gender fluid representation. I actually really like the way there's there are many non-binary and trans characters. Uh, this book basically deals with... The, um, where Earth has decided to launch a generation ship to the nearest habitable planet. They're going to be in space for decades. And for whatever reason, I don't know if this makes sense. I'm not an astrophysicist, but they decide to have an all-female crew so that the crew can... All-female-bodied crew. Right, right. They want a crew where every crew member can give birth. That's the main thing. Yeah. And they want to do that because they want the crew to birth the next generation while on the ship. I don't, Oh, you know, I just realized like, so, so we'll get into it. There's obviously a mystery. So there's a saboteur on board. What if they sabotage like the sperm bank? Are you, are you just screwed? It's heavily implied that people were trying to fuck with that. Yes. So, Regardless, so like regardless. maybe get, give men a chance. Okay, I want on your <laughs> rocket too. <laughs> I no, I thought. Look, the all female crew, or, or I don't know what words to use here, but the all person who can give birth crew to is fine. I like it, and I like the way that many of the crew, though they will be getting pregnant, do not necessarily identify as women, and it's not a point that is like hammered. It's just a normal thing that exists in the story. And there's never a lot of special attention drawn to it. They just use preferred pronouns. Trans men just, you know, they're there. I guess they're okay with getting pregnant, which is, I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, Um, I mean, it's different (laughs) from person to person, but I don't know about that one, man. Okay. So, this is a sensitive topic, and I uh, look two cis het white men. We're not the best people to be talking about this aspect of the book, but I will say there's a lot of missed opportunities to talk about some of these issues. But I, I can't blame her for not taking the opportunity because she's already talking about so <laughs> much stuff. <laughs> like it, it is shocking how this plan to have them get pregnant mid flight, give birth and raise the children to a certain age and then put everybody in hibernation doesn't make like worlds more sense than just having everybody in hibernation from the beginning and They're the whole gonna time. Put them back in hibernation? Yeah. Oh my god, what? Yeah, it's like 10 years in hibernation. Then they wake up, they raise the next generation to a certain age I thought. And then they have, they said they have enough sleeping juice for 12 more years. I thought that was always the plan was to go back down. Oh my God. Wow. I Um, could be wrong. So this is the other thing I wanted to talk about. (laughs) Not great. So this is what I don't understand. I I don't fully understand how that is better than like how sending a crew of 80 people and having them get pregnant midway is better than just sending a crew of 160 people and leaving them in hibernation the whole time. Like if your goal is to have 160 people by the time you get to the planet, I don't fully understand. I also don't understand why you go back in hibernation. Like if your goal, like why don't you just inseminate before you reach the planet and and, and then you 
you're there. Well, they didn't want... Look, all I'm saying is, once all the <laughs> shit that happens in the book happens, you're not putting me back under. Okay, you let's... You keep your sleeping juice the hell away from me, friendo. Okay, let's let's talk about the mission. So here's yeah. the idea. Here's, here's the pitch. Yeah, the, let's do it. The world's uh, richest person is a woman who... I immediately forgot her name and started Space calling her Space Elon Musk. I started calling her Teflana Musk. <laughs> and her her she's she's worth trillions. And she has an idea that she wants to colonize another habitable planet. Now, right off the bat, I've read some other reviews now just to see what, what other people got from this. And there seems to be broad misunderstanding about why we're even doing this. Half of the reviews I've read say to escape a dying planet. Yeah. They man. load up a generation ship and they go to the next planet. The planet's not dying, it's dealing with the consequences of climate change for sure. But I, I just wanted to highlight a couple of quotes from the books. Uh, Someday we will put things back the way they used to be. The insects, the trees, and all the birds. Asuka's mom. The birds. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of birds. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of birds. We're sending millions of kilograms of our precious resources out of the solar system. These are not things that can be replenished. Asuka's mom deep in her delusions this is this is her at her most delusional um but she's making sense to me so maybe i'm nuts too um it's not no, giving man. up a... no i got more it's not giving up on the world it's making more of it isn't that the point i thought the pro if i thought the problems here were unfixable i couldn't support the mission because if that were true we huh? wouldn't deserve another chance and we do huh huh Wow, man. That's, Ga I've... that's Gabriella. Uh, oh, boy. You have multiple people talking about how the Earth is fixable. And while they're yeah. on the Earth, people are working, they're eating, they're dealing with, you know, storms and shrinking coastlines and some food shortages and stuff. But for the most part, everybody seems to have enough to eat. People work jobs. Yeah, but people there's are... so much violence, Ben. People have people guns are... everywhere in America. Wait a minute. Nope. Keep people going are still people are still getting uh, PhDs in music and living in flats in London with their partner and their two dogs. Um, people are what? still. <laughs> that's what that's what happened to Miki. Miki drops oh out of the program. Oh my you're right. And she just gets an apartment and has a great life. Uh, Wait, so is that her name? Miki. Yeah. Dude, the okay. So I audio audible this and they just pronounced it mickey like the mouse i would not <laughs> no i'm guessing it's not spelled like that i was also like wait she's japanese but okay she's japanese. i guess it's not mickey it's mickey <laughs> um but our main character asuka is how do they pronounce that in the book by the way asuka okay good because they keep calling her Susie. Yeah. And and the only way I could think you get Susie from Asuka is if you say Asuka. They're saying it the way you're saying it, Ben. Good. Okay. So I don't know why they call her Susie. That also that's also if we're escaping a if we're escaping a dying planet, one of the things that you brought up, and maybe you're going to bring it up later, but I'm just going to jump in on it. Um, why are the nations of the world coming together to spend a bunch of money and then shoot it off into space? Yeah, I am going to bring that up. So, so Teflana Musk had a plan to <laughs> send I'm eighty going to women sell your to dirt space back to you. Eighty women to space to go to Planet X and oh, Planet X with X. The it's it's branding, cross branding, genius. Oh God, <laughs> I don't I don't think I don't think she had that in mind. No, That's too many no. themes. <laughs> they were going to anyway. call it New Earth, but then Teflana got a hold of it. Okay, so she wants to send 80 
people into space, have them get pregnant halfway, and then they get to New Earth and they have a great time colonizing New Earth. With a with a population of anywhere from 80 to 240 people. A real viable population. A who's who of who's in your family, okay. some might say. So, <laughs> here, there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of problems. Okay, so the, the first thing I'm trying to dispute is that they left because the world is dying. The world is fine. It's not great. It's not the best it's ever been, but it's going to be fine. As I, the, Especially because I have, the launch takes place over, what, six to ten years? Somewhere in that range? And again, people. one of them drops out. One of the people who can board the ship drops out because she wants to focus on her music career. Yeah. Things are fine. Okay? They're not abandon the planet bad. There's no... Multiple people mention in the text of the book the earth is is very fixable. Yeah, but you know what we should do? We should shoot off a bunch of those resources in space, Ben, so that it's harder to fix. Checkmate. Let's do it. My, my point is, this book is not about the end of the planet Earth. I don't yeah, really no, we, know. Yeah, no, who gives a shit about Earth, Ben? Would you think I, that, I, that anyone cared about Earth? Earth is old news, daddy-o, Okay. Planet X is the new hipness. <laughs> oh, that's hot. That's hot. I don't know where people get this notion that they're fleeing the dying planet. Because Asuka mentions that. that Asuka mentions that as a motive like twice, and she's shot down by every person she mentions it to. The book is explicitly telling you that's not why they're doing this. They're doing it just for fun. Which is a fine motive to explore stuff. That's yeah. why they do it in why Star Trek. Why do you Trek. hate fun, Ben? I, I don't you're, hate fun. Your, your hip, cool aunt, Teflana Musk, wants to go to a planet in another solar system to spread around the human race a bit. And, like, you're you're trying to, to cramp her style, dog. See, I'm cool. Okay. I'm hip. I'm with the young people on this one, Ben. So broadly speaking, what happens in this journey, these these 80 people get selected, and one of them is Asuka, our point of view character, and Asuka is the alternate. She feels like she she's kind of the second choice. She will find out she gets in because Miki wanted to work on her music career. So she feels out of place, and then... Uh, something explodes on the spaceship and it turns out. Oh my God. Oh my God. There's a saboteur. Three people are dead, including the captain. What are we going to do? Murder mystery in space. Oh my God. It's among us, but with real people, Ben, which I was fine with. That's that's what I thought the book was going to be. Actually. Yeah. I don't care how flimsy the premise of the mission is if we're doing murder mystery in space. Cool. I'm on board. Yeah, I can accept it. I can accept any flimsy premise to get to that point, And then we just focus on that point, but we don't focus on that point. Nate, every other chapter, we go back in time to the very painful beginnings of Oscar's tragic life. And this is a second point of contention. I'm going to have Nate. Um, oh, geez. A lot of people telling me this is a hard science fiction book. What? Huh? Yeah. Who? Who? I want names, Ben. I, I, need, I'm, I need to put them on a list somewhere. This is not I hard went, sci-fi. I went to review scouring, and I saw that it was a book about environmental collapse. It's not. I saw that it was a hard science fiction book. And that's when I started... To do the doing math? S- I started doing some some numbers here. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the the ill fated sub sub genre of words about books called bad faith criticism corner. I'm doing math again, y'all. I minored in mathematics, and I got to get my money's worth. If I don't do one of these once a year, then uh, I wasted my life. So, 
It seems to me that human technology, aside from our VR goggles, has not advanced considerably much in Asuka's time. I'm, I'm guessing this takes place within the next 50 to 100 years of Earth's history. Well, you're wrong, Ben, because the Earth when, is dying. <laughs> well, I think the stuff that's being described is the effects of climate change predicted to happen in 50 to 100 years. Oh, my God. The, the technology advances are things that people would wait. Wait, hold predi- on. Hold on. Hold on. Are you saying that, like, the Earth isn't going to die in the next 50 to 100 years and I don't have anything to worry about? Um, it That's could. actually a huge, huge load off my chest, actually. Oh, no, it sure no, could. This is good. It, it definitely nah, could. No, no, I'm not listening to you anymore. I already got my answer. Oh, that's nice, man. Okay. So, All right. very, very conspicuously for a hard science fiction book, we're going to Planet X, you know, not named. Didn't look up any planets. Didn't want people like Ben doing the math. Thought it would be pedantic. Tried to head it off at the at the pass, but you didn't. I'm still doing the math. So I went out. And I liked you, it better when it was Planet Twitter. You told me <laughs> that maybe they discovered a new planet. So Yeah, Ben. So, so I didn't go for the nearest planet. I went for the nearest star. And I even looked at very dim stars i looked at brown dwarfs the nearest brown dwarf we have ever found which is dim hard to find stuff here nate so the nearest thing they could possibly be flying towards that i can tell is about 4.22 light years we'll go over why that doesn't even matter in a minute but Mm -hmm. if you're going to travel to the nearest star or the nearest earth-like planet about the same four ish light years okay to get yeah, there how, how far away could that be right um i'll tell you so to get there in about 30 years which is what i've calculated this mission's maximum to be but i guess it could be more maybe they can live longer in space i don't know i thought they were up for i thought they were down for 10 years up for 10 years down for 10 years going with that for a projection we'll see why this also doesn't really matter because the premise of the mission is so shockingly unscientific um to go that far in 30 years you would need to be going at 14 percent light speed which is yeah that that sounds pretty easy actually 14 percent that's like you're leaving like 86 percent on the table we have never even come close to uh uh, like a decent fraction of a percent of light speed. And we are not likely know, to man. do so Can anytime you see me in the run? I don't, I don't have much in the tank for endurance, but I, I've got speed, so... Believe it or not, I have seen you run. Yeah. And no, you don't. How fast? Is that... That's at least, that's at least gotta be like 1%, right? So you get winded on a racquetball court. They're about 20 feet across. There you go. Hey, I didn't say endurance we're talking about speed ben okay yeah you crossed it you crossed it in less than 10 seconds (laughs) all right so what's that like a percentage of light speed it's a percentage of light speed (laughs) there you go all right so then i went a little further okay i was like okay well maybe they've made advances in propulsion or something i don't know a lot about physics but i i said like okay how much energy does it take to accelerate the mass of the average submarine to 14% light speed? (laughs) I'm sure the U.S. does that all the time. How hard could it be? And it is, uh, by rough estimate, 18,630 of the largest hydrogen bombs ever detonated worth of energy completely shooting out the back of that rocket. So you're saying they have some sort of fusion reactor that just constantly explodes hydrogen bombs out the back. Yeah, maybe. Um, But then they're also going to need another one that explodes them out the front because I haven't factored in deceleration into any of these plans. This is just to shoot a, a missile made of people at Planet X. So, yeah, I I assume you would need to accelerate. I I didn't want to do the math of, like, how much would you have to accelerate? And then when do you have to start decelerating? I I didn't care about that. 
because already it's like you don't have the you don't have the energy. Um, have and you, if you factored did, in the fact that Teflana Musk has revolutionized energy distribution in cars, and maybe that will translate to rockets? Have you factored that in yet? I did. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's it's a little unfortunate. Okay. All right. At, at our current technology, to get 4.22 light years, I I figured it would take about 6,500 years. Like if you could get, get the fastest thing we've ever moved. Like space is big, y'all. It, it, it's a big place. It, it, it's not... Some might say it's, it's deep. Yeah. It's not a short hop from here to there, no matter how fancy the bomb you strap yourself to. So it's not hard sci-fi. It, they call it Planet X. They don't want you doing these calculations. You're not meant to be thinking about it this deep. She doesn't want it to be hard sci-fi. It's not hard sci-fi. Don't put that in your reviews. Was it supposed to be hard sci-fi? I don't, I think, don't it was. think so. Okay. I'm taking issue with the reviewer. Okay. Calling was it this hard sci-fi. a positive sci-fi. review or a negative yes, review? Yes, it's a positive review. Oh, you're dumb. Sorry. I'm not cutting that. You're dumb. I hope you're listening <laughs> to this. You're wrong. Okay. Second reason it's not hard sci-fi. There are almost no redundancies built into this ship. Yeah, there they are. Can't they've, got, s- they've got extra people in case the people before them die. That's why she's an alternate, Ben. Easy. They have one extra person. <laughs> yeah, okay, but that's that's one. I mean, it's May- not like more than one person will die, right? Okay, here's the plot of the here's the plot of the book, Nate. You know why the explosion's such a big deal? It knocks them off course. Yeah. They can't steer the ship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? There's no way to turn this thing around, Nate. If anything in space, anything, had hit this thing, going at the speed they were going, A, it would have just blown them to dust. But then B, even if they had managed to build a shield of some sort and take the hit, which there is a cone on the front. Just just thought of that. There's a big old radiation cone. If anything hits them, if they get knocked off course, can't turn around. Yeah, if it, if it helps, it doesn't matter either because they can't steer around obstacles. So maybe that's going why that they're speed, all asleep. You know, who cares? Going that speed, you're not steering around anything. <laughs> Especially like you're not steering around anything you can't detect. There's a lot of reasons you couldn't detect something like I get it, but you would think you would want some kind of maneuvering capability. Hey, they have maneuvering jets, Ben. I think they're really small, and uh, it's only for, for precise What are they for? Changes? What are they that... for? <laughs> 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 I just thought about this. What are they for? What, what kind of precision do you need here? They're for making minor adjustments to the course, which is, which is fine. But what if you made, what if you turned one on, got the ship pointed in a different direction, fired up the main thrusters for, I don't know why they can't turn the ship, Nate. And I don't know why nobody thought there would ever be a scenario where that might need to happen. Because we're staffing it with a bunch of teenage girls and we can't trust them to drive the car because they'll fucking (laughs) ding it again or they'll like pull it into the garage and knock the mirror off and like we're not going through that again okay oh no (laughs) no oh god okay um so i don't know why they can't see the shit um second thing or third we're on the third thing we're on the third thing um a lot of people say that one of the things they like about it is how the constant going back to the past, alternating with the murder mystery in the future, uh, they like how that slowly develops the characters over time. Yeah. 
Those characters whose names I was struggling to remember and keep straight. I actually wrote in my notes, um, and maybe it's it's different for you, Ben. Um, I wrote, I can't keep track of these people. Who, who is who is Mickey? Is that the captain? No, that's not no. the captain. Uh, that's Mitt Mahome, but Mahone, that's, Mahome. I thought it was Becky McMahon. Yeah, yeah. They they occasionally call her Becky, but they also they, it sounded like they were saying Mitt Mahone. But your you showed me the spelling, and it looks like MacMan, like Vince McMahon. It's it's Mick. It's M C M A H O N. Mick, which I have always pronounced McMahon. I've known many people with that name. Yeah, the that is how I would have pronounced it too. That is not how it was. I couldn't remember who Yaz was at first. Yaz I didn't is know a who. Programmer? She's the robot. Yeah, robot? she's the robot yeah. person. Uh, there's Lala. I remembered Lala. She was she's... initially part of the U.S. We'll get to that whole selection process. Oh, maybe. you wrote that down because I just I I was like, okay, well, no, yeah, I just she dropped out. And remember cares. it. I read the. Oh, book. okay. I I was like, I'm struggling to keep who Lala and Winnie are. Is Winnie with Roof? I I can't keep these. People uh, yeah, straight. Winnie Winnie died immediately. Yeah, Winnie died with the captain in and the kitchen. Lala <laughs> is with Ruth. Yes, Lala and Ruth are dating, and Am and. Becky were dating, I think. Were they? It's Im- I don't know. It's implied they're together. Like, AM's the only one who's upset that she's gone. Yeah, no one seemed to give a shit about the captain. Other than AM. Okay, let's just talk about the captain real quick. Becky McMahon. Or this is gonna be- Becky Mitt Mahome, Ben. The audiobook may have been a variable quality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't I- listen to it. I don't know about that one, man. But yeah, okay, Becky McMahon. Okay, Becky McMahon. Space race. A real take charge con- Oh. (laughs) I thought you were going to build up to it. (laughs) (laughs) I I really thought you were going to build up to it. No, that- Yeah, she's straight up space racist. (laughs) I don't have time to build up to everything that's wrong with this book. I- you you have often told me good luck editing something. We're thirty five <laughs> minutes in. I don't know how to summarize this. It's all over the place. So okay, one of the things that's going on on Earth. <laughs> ben, um, you seem stressed. Do you want me to tell you a random fact about a bird I learned off of a Laffy Taffy? Yeah. <laughs> tell me a random fact about a bird, mate. <laughs> Your mind just went totally blank, didn't it? <laughs> it went completely blank, then. <laughs> oh, God. All versions of Angry Birds have a combined total of 2 billion downloads. So Becky McMahon, she's the captain, and she is very unlikable. Everybody's very unlikable. They were screened for this. <laughs> they, they, they recruited only the most hostile, <laughs> uber-competitive... <laughs> Yeah, they really did do this, didn't Group they? Of they set pe- up a system of high <laughs> yeah. school... I was going to yes. say women, but let's say girls. High school girls, just the meanest, like, worst people, hyper-competitive, and and they they selected them for the mission. I don't really think... Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I don't think there's a big problem... With them being girls. Because any high school group of people is going to be too immature to staff Yeah, that's spaceship. why I wouldn't select high school people. Right, right. Just there's in a reason general. That, just... There's a reason astronauts are of, uh, of a certain age. Um, but it makes sense Although in this case Although there was that one astronaut that like shat in her diaper as she drove across the country to confront her lover who was sleeping with another astronaut so. fine astronauts are fucking crazy i don't care <laughs> anyway it's all the space rays they it fries their brains that must be it that's maybe that's why 
Becky McMahon is a space racist, Ben. No, she was a space racist. She was an Earth racist first. Yeah, okay. she was, so, and that wasn't ever so, brought up. Okay, so there are three political factions mentioned in the book. Oh, okay. Uh, oh. We're doing that. All right. There's Cobro. Cobro. Which I don't look, remember I'm, what they do. I'm, they're the men's rights people, Ben. Oh, okay. I've never felt called out before <laughs> over men's rights because it's so silly do, and ridiculous. I, do you it, feel it called me, out ben. now? Yeah, it hurt it hurt my feel feels, Ben. Because I forgot about the men's rights activists? No, because she decided to name it Cobro. Oh, not Alpha Chad. <laughs> that would have been better, <laughs> Ben. The <laughs> Alpha Chads? That's what they yeah. would have named themselves if they were thinking. <laughs> okay. So there's three groups, I think. Cobro S N E the save. SME, Mother Save Mother Earth. Uh, that's the autocorrect. Uh, and then there's uh, the Mackies. Were they? They're basically MAGA Republicans. Something for okay. American Constitution. Make America Constitution. Got it. <laughs> it's on their on their list of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> and they did not realize that the captain who was in charge of this whole mission was part of Mackie and oh, uh, yeah. the horrible did... space eugenicist and racist. Where did she find the time? Where did any be... of them find the time, Ben? No, here's my thing. Like, okay. So keep in mind these three political factions. These are the three political factions that are positioned as like an obstacle to this mission. Because this book has a little bit of the expanse problem where only crazy people could find any flaw with this plan (laughs) to send. I I am in total agreement with them because I know my grocery taxes are going up, okay? I know I'm going to be going to the store and dropping $300 to buy waffles, and most of that money is going towards the stupid fucking rocket that you're going to shoot off into space, and they're probably going to hit an asteroid and die or something. I don't... Hashtag not my groceries, buddy. Why is my country spending so much money on this stupid fucking plan? Oh, well, no, see, it sounds like you do have a problem with it, which means... I'm You're the bad one of the crazies. Guy. Yeah, You're one of the crazies. I'm. I, I guess I'll join uh, Cobro. <laughs> SME is the way to go, man. That's what yeah, all the I other kn- candidates are joining. Yeah, I know. That's why I decided to go with Cobro because I thought it would be the funniest option. Okay, so they still got MAGA Republicans in this world, so hopefully they're not too distant in the future. I'm hoping those things don't last for a while. They're they're basically just like yeah they're, they're pseudo racist MAGA Republicans. I don't know what else to say. Let's oh God so fuck. <laughs> Dude. Good good luck editing this one, Nate. You fucking idiot. Okay, to get to the captain, we might as well start summarizing. I'm going to summarize what happens in Oscar's life up to the point where she joins the program. Right. Okay. Lightning round. Lightning round. Okay. Oscars living in California. Wildfires are a raging. There's a bus coming to evacuate everyone. Her father and her brother get on it. She's about to get on it, but then the family dog runs away and she goes to chase after it. But the mom in the first of many sins, I guess, does not allow her to run into the blazing inferno after the dog. What a bitch. Am I right? And for some reason, the bus takes off without them. And they, <laughs> they were hide, dilly-dollying, Ben. And they, they hide in their swimming pool to wait out the fire. And Asuka touches the edge of the swimming pool because she wants to get out, realizes... It's very hot, and her mom yells at her, the second of her mom's many sins. 
Yeah. I hate her already, Ben. So, house burns down. They all live, though. At least they got each other. Don't get too attached. Oh, I was really starting to get attached to this family, Ben. So they get... Even though in the present day, one of them is on a spaceship getting blasted across the solar system and then some, and uh, we'll never see your family again anyway. So they get a FEMA tent next to a couple of MAGA Republicans, the Mackies. And they're flying flying a Mackie flag. And her dad is kind of a wimp and, like, teaches her... Uh, teaches her brother the preamble to the U.S. Constitution or something, and he has him recite it for the racists so that they don't yell at him. Uh, And she points out that these racists aren't, like, the worst. They're mostly content to just, like, smoke weed and fly stupid flags. And so they live in the camp for a while. Um, The mom doesn't like it. She wants to go back to Japan, which, by the way, did you know in this future... I think maybe in our current time, if you're willing to move to rural Japan, they'll just give you a house. Yeah. Please, someone, for the love of God, live in rural Japan. No. And the father says no to that. And I'm like, bro, somebody offers me a house anywhere. I'm gone. Let's do it. Really? I'll keep that in mind. You're going to buy me a house, Nate? You buy me a house, I'll move to... What if, what if I buy myself a house and then I give you my old house? Is that... Maybe. I could work Ooh. with that. Okay. Uh, then, <clears throat> uh, the FEMA tent, eventually people start complaining that, you know, everyone in the FEMA village is dying. And so they give them a, a nice hotel. And while they're staying at the hotel, Luis is like, hey, let's go play with our VR headsets in the pool. And Oscar's like, yeah, good plan. Let's do that tonight. But then she pretends to be asleep. Luis goes down on his own, and he unceremoniously drowns. Rip. I don't know anything about Luis at this stage, other than... He was a kid? He was a kid. He liked space. He, his name was yeah, Luis. He, yeah. And he, what more he do you need to, to play, know? He wanted he to play VR in the pool. He died for your sins, Ben. I don't know if he could swim. Uh, if Not he couldn't with that swim, VR headset strapped to his face. They hint that the VR headset, like, confused him or something, and that's why he drowned. But okay. I don't know why he drowned. But also, he I liked mean, space. Like that's if I he likes take space. a VR headset to the pool. The VR headset's gonna short circuit pretty quick. Pretty sure it can't survive being submerged in water. Well, I don't know. Maybe these ones can. They're made of Teflon. That okay, there you go. Well, if the pool didn't get him, the cancer would have, so So Asuka and her family uh finally moved to Japan. Did Dad go to Japan? I thought he said Dad went behind. to Japan. Dad went to Japan. Oh my god. And um they're living in rural Japan. Asuka, despite living in Japan for years, never learns Japanese. We're gonna talk about that here in a second. Um <clears throat> Yeah, because everyone speaks English in Japan. Everyone speaks English in rural Japan, especially. Um, yeah, well, maybe not why, rural Japan. So No, in the ass end of Japan, where they're giving out houses, everyone speaks fluent English. You would have no issue whatsoever. I wonder Does she if go that's to school? True. I don't know. Uh, no. she. Well, yeah, she went to school for the yeah, rocket well, program, Ben. Yeah. So, okay. The space program starts up. They're going to recruit... A um, bunch of young people to go be part of this space thing. Every country, if they donate an exorbitant sum of money, will be allotted so many spaces uh, in proportion to the amount of money they're given. So, like, America and China each get five places. And I mean, my, Japan, my property tax went up 25% this year, but we get... Five seats on this rocket, Ben. At least someone who looks maybe like you will wind up on a planet you'll never only, see. Only if we get a space racist as captain to make sure that we keep everyone as white as possible. Yeah, we'll talk about that. So, uh, God. Asuka's like, hey, Mom, I kind of hate it here, and I want to apply. 
I want to apply for the thing. And her mom's like, her mom's like, Hey, fun fact, your dad and I are getting divorced. We're not getting divorced. We're going to live separately for many years until your father dies unceremoniously like Luis. You have no relationship with either of them that we ever see. Uh, you hate your mom. I don't know why she didn't really do anything to you. And then maybe she had a break with reality, which is kind of understandable given her circumstances and your dad abandoned you. I don't think she did, Ben. I think she just started hanging out with the environmentalists and uh, it got a little more and more radical over time, but I don't think she she starts talking about how like they're putting chemicals in the water to turn the frogs gay. She, she, she has a few legit conspiracy theories. Nate. Yeah, that's part of that group too, though. I, I, don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think she's crazy okay. so much as she's following a crazy group of crazy. She gets people. into like an environmental QAnon. Let's say. yeah, yeah. If QAnon had any kind of noble ambition, this is what it might look what? like. Resurrecting Robert Kennedy isn't a noble ambition. No, nah. not even <laughs> the best Kennedy. Yeah, that's true. Ted's still around. Ted's dead. He's been dead for know, years. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> the committee. Can you imagine? Can you imagine trying to raise funds to resurrect Ted Kennedy? <laughs> one of the worst Kennedys. Yeah. Are you well? Except for the one that's bopping around right now. With yeah, the one that's muscles. still alive. Yeah. 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 Fuck that guy. But Ted Kennedy's definitely, <laughs> definitely up there. Uh. Okay, where I, I lost my train of thought at like all the various Kennedys. Your dad like, is uh, dead. Your dad. Your dad got cancer, and he's no. He's die not dead later yet. on. He's not dead. Yeah, he's yet. not dead he's yet, a- but he will die later. And uh, I guess you'll you'll talk with him occasionally in like emails and stuff. And uh, he's going back to America. We're not going to see him again, except for his last time with you. Yeah, whatever. So her mom's like, okay, I'm super against you applying to be sent off into space to die understandably. And I'm very against it, but if you choose to live with me instead of your dad here in Japan, I will allow you to apply. And her mom fills out the application. I'm, I'm definitely not using leverage to try to become the favorite parent here. Um, Um, Fills out the application in Japanese. Asuka arrives to the program knowing nothing about the program. Nothing about how they're selecting. Nothing about how there's only so many spots. She thought she applied. She got accepted. She's in. She's on the ship. No, not so. Easy. Big competition. They think uh, they're they're recruiting like 800 kids. 80 of them get to go. And um, Asuka doesn't even know who she's there to represent because her mom filled out the application in Japanese and Asuka is Japanese American. So could be one of two countries, but she filled out the application in Japanese. Asuka can't read Japanese, not even two characters of Japanese Ni and Hon, which are what her mother wrote in the country line of the application that she wrote in Japanese. I don't know where you're going with this, Ben. I if I wrote I, I have an a feeling application, it's either I have a feeling she might be going in for Japan, but she also could go in as a, as American. Ben, Nate, if I submitted my application in Japanese, let me put it this way: if I applied for a job with your company and I sent in my resume in Japanese, do you think I'd be more or less likely to get it? You might not even know it's a resume. Then, yeah, I, I, I don't know it, what this is. Why are you sending me this? But if I applied to a Japanese company and my resume was written in Japanese, I th- you think that would be pretty well received, right? Yeah. Unless you think you maybe Asuka's uh, too dumb to be in this program? Nah, she can train to be smarter and have common sense, Ben. I laughed at that. I laughed long and hard at that. <laughs> I don't even know which country. Which country did you apply for me, Mom? You wrote it in Japanese, so I couldn't read it. She wrote it in Japanese, Oscar. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> what do you think she put you down for? <laughs> no, she had you apply for fucking Texas. What are you talking about? So Oscar's in the program. This is where she meets Becky, everybody like that. Becky's in the program. They're all 12 years old, right? Yeah. 
Becky's in the program now. In this program, they will live at this school. They will work at this school for the next six years, I guess. Eight years? I don't know. I don't know exactly. And, that sounds about right. <clears throat> Was she a racist at 12? Probably. She joined a political movement at age 12 and kept it her entire yeah, her life. Par- her parents despite probably Despite never joined, seeing her and parents. she was like... I'll just I'll just join and be like them. When do you think most kids start to well, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe despite having very limited contact with her parents and being surrounded by helps, an international ben, community. If it helps, who the fuck cares about Becky? She dies at the very beginning and no one has a kind word to say about her and we just like, all right, we got a new captain. Yin right. Yue? Ying Yue, yeah, I think. Okay, all right, <clears throat> cool. Glad, so, glad that was pronounced properly. Here's the thing. Uh, Becky is at one point, like, there's there's going to be a lot of drama that comes out, and they go back and forth in time, and I don't really want to do that, because, like, the way this is organized, all that stuff was interspersed with a bunch of stuff about the murder mystery, so it's kind of confusing if I just tell it to you the way it happens in the book. But As opposed to everything I've been doing so far. If you want, I can just occasionally derail us, like I always do. And... So uh, Becky will find out as all the drama comes out on the ship and like everybody turns on everybody. Uh, Becky was trying to rig the artificial insemination thing to keep the races pure. Like she wants yeah. whites with whites, blacks with blacks, Asians with Asians. Um, Not realizing that they're going to have a population so minuscule. Right. So they're tiny, going to be It's going to have to mix to survive. There are going to be 160 people on the new planet. You had to have learned at some point in your biology classes here that your your kids probably aren't even going to get to choose their their partners or who However you decide to do it. That's probably all going to be planned by the computer for maximum genetic diversity. You're not... No. You're not mm-hmm. keeping the races pure. What are you talking about? <laughs> you, <laughs> there, you couldn't possibly. It's so... It's, it's just like... It's it's so symptomatic of what's wrong with this novel that I was just stuck on it. Where it's like, that's an idea you had. Becky's a space racist. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna keep the bloodlines pure. Without really like walking back through the internal logic of the book up to this point, how could somebody who thinks that way Become the captain of this spaceship. <laughs> because that's so goddamn stupid. How have you not screened for this and figured this out already? Like, Where did she have does, time to go to the clan rally? How does Becky think that's going to work? Becky has to know. To get on this ship, right? She has to get top marks in every course. She has to be evaluated by numerous psychologists. She's got a chip in her brain that your computer interacts with. How does she not realize (laughs) that's not an option? (laughs) Because it was working so far, right? (laughs) (laughs) Half the crew... Is multiracial already? <laughs> that's a, that's a thing that comes up. Like most of these people are multiracial. I I I just it's too much. That's a subplot you just have to cut. Becky can't be a space racist. I mean, she could be a space racist. Like if it she helps can the subplot. She, 
it ends almost immediately at the beginning, and it's only retroactively stated how much of a piece of shit she was. But if she was racist, like, okay, maybe she thinks, like, maybe she thinks white people should be in charge. Okay, like she's a white supremacist. She has to realize that's not gonna work. <laughs> this is this is the wrong mission. <laughs> It's it's just too late, Becky. <laughs> There's not enough of them on the ship, Becky. Yeah. <laughs> Becky, I think that you would need to start over completely from scratch and get an all white crew to begin with. Yeah. If that's, that's the if that's the, if that's what you want to do. I don't know if you realize this, but other countries had seats on this, Becky. Well, it's like the second in command is from China, Becky. You get caught immediately. This was the dumbest fucking plan I have ever heard. Why can't yeah, she why just she be dies. an asshole? That's why, why can't she, dies, she just be ben? an asshole? Because Winnie found out that the captain... I guess this is, spoiler alert. The bomb had nothing to do with the captain. It wasn't meant for the captain. Um, the bomb going off just happens to kill the captain and Winnie because they're in the dining module at the time uh, because Winnie is having a fierce discussion with the space racist about how space racism is wrong and there's actually an alarm that goes off but they both ignore it so they can continue to yell at each other and then all dead How? they're dead now Ben okay it's for the best (laughs) <laughs> i know winnie was was brought up on several occasions in the past i can't for the life of me remember what she did or who she was in the past so she's not important good there's there's 80 people on this ship and four of them matter there's also trina who was cheating and was fired there's mickey who who wants to mickey no mickey <laughs> who becomes a pop star a j-pop star (laughs) when did she have the time to write j-pop songs in this curriculum was i think what i was asking as i was listening to this well she's just that smart yeah i i guess sure okay you know i often look at j-pop stars and go god damn it they could have been a rocket scientist but instead here they are (laughs) with this music they could have been colonizing the moon if we would have just gotten them all together. Which brings me to another point. I don't think they've colonized the moon. No, they haven't. Why would I they colonize met... the moon? What's up on the moon, Ben? Rocks, exactly. I'd rather okay. colonize a planet where all the hard work is done for me and just have to figure out how to get there, Ben. Okay. You know what? I'm we're telling doing two you, episodes on really We're doing two episodes catapult. on this. We're doing two episodes on this. The second episode is the murder, murder mystery. mystery. We're, we're, the, we're the not even going to get to it. Yeah. The part we really <laughs> wanted to get to, like that was the part of the book we were excited for. And then it turns out to, eh. okay, let's, let's talk about the state of, of space travel in this book. They mention once in an offhand conversation. Cause I looked that if they fail, this program they could probably get on the next mars mission the next mars mission nate we've gone to mars that's the only hint we get that there's even a space program in this world yeah well i mean that's how we're they're gonna save the world and or abandon the world for mars so okay they've built a ship and this ship can be almost totally self-sufficient. It can recycle like 95% of everything it uses and it grows its own food. It might need more water occasionally, but you know, for the most part, this thing can exist in space unsupplied for decades. As long as it has a sun to power. Right now it's being powered somewhat by the generator or the generator, the, the rocket, the, the thrust, the engine, it's unclear what that is, actually. 
Um, it's made out of unobtainium, Ben, yeah, obviously. Yeah, so, well, it's made out of deconstructed nuclear bombs. Unfortunately, they say that. But <laughs> Okay. My thing was So the world is doing pretty well then. We're we're de we're we're de arming. Yeah, you would, it it yeah. must, it probably came as a real big shock when World War 3 broke out halfway through the book. They were probably like, "Man, we should have kept some of those bombs." Shit, call them back. <laughs> Turn around. Yeah, blow them up. They can't. Nate there's no steering wheel. <laughs> they can't turn around. Me. <laughs> How did we forget that? Like, have you read all what? of it yet? No, I'm, I'm about, um, I'm at like eighty percent. Do you want me to spoil the the motivation behind the bombing? Yeah, but cut it from the episode. So, uh, one of my main problems is if you take this technology for a self-sustaining habitat. And you deploy it within the solar system, you may actually find a way to extract resources and continue to help with the reconstruction of the planet Earth and environmental engineering and all that. Um, you could just yeah. save Earth. And yeah. in doing so, help infinitely more people. There's, I, I mean, just, just to give you a quick ratio, just to put it in perspective for you, there's 10 billion people on the Earth in this book. There's 80 on this rocket. So if there's like even a chance that you could improve the lives of 10 billion people who are suffering, maybe sometimes you should do that. But I, you know what? I just thought about it. I think that makes me one of the, one of the radicals. Yep. You have to join uh, the save mother earth. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the only one I really want to be a part of, you know, Oscar's friends. Let's talk about the characters. Oh God! All right. So because I've been naming them, I remember their names. There's Winnie. She's dead. There's Not Ruth, one of her friends. Who's That's her, one friend. Of her friends? Uh, there's Lala, who won't stop telling Asuka how uh, how she's dating Ruth now, and like I hope that's not weird that I'm dating your friend. At, You're at making first, it weird, I thought but Ruth. Yeah. Will, yeah, you are making it weird. Please stop. But at first I thought, like, Ruth was Asuka's ex. But no. Yes. They're, they're friends. They're just friends. How... They we're never romantically involved. I, I, I can't get a read on Asuka's romantic interests, if any. None. Well, she, no, got, she's attracted to that. Zero. She's attracted to that boy at that party. Well, man, that, that's going to suck for you because there aren't going to be any boys on this ship. No, not for a little while. I hope that you. I hope that you're content with either uh, not having any romantic options or deciding to. Uh... It'll be eighteen years. <laughs> for eighteen I mean, years, some, there you go. Yeah, so you could be a power cougar. Oscar's friends at school. She winds up with a group consisting mostly of herself, Miki, Ruth, and. Trina? Trina, who cheats at everything. Yeah. They they have a lot of... Asuka's miserable, and I don't fully understand why. Like, Asuka because is she's, just... She, because she's at this hyper-competitive school that's way above her pay grade. Okay. Here's, here's my problem. <laughs> one, one of your many problems. Yeah. I don't like Asuka. Whoa, and, what? No, Ben, she's... I don't think that's an unpopular opinion. Mm. No, I, I, I think people. most of the reviews are like, she's kind of the worst. Yeah, it's um, it, it's okay to have an unlikable character. I'm, I, I don't think that makes a bad book. But I don't really get why Asuka's so miserable. Okay, Because she's her... got a dead dad and brother, and her mom might as well be dead. She's been through the fucking ringer twice over and then some. Dead husband, dead brain cells, dead, I don't know, parents? They're probably dead. She's she's miserable long before her dad's dead. She Yeah, because is... her brother died, Ben. I don't really get why she hates her mom. That's like the core because of the book. Her... Well, that's that's towards the end. You want me to that, say that's the it? whole fucking book is her relationship with her mom. Okay, why does she hate her mom? On their last day when Why does she uh... hate her mom before this? Uh, because her mom is an environmental weirdo 
and <laughs> doesn't get the importance of this mission that Asuka probably okay. doesn't like. Why did she hate her mom before that? Because her mom wants what's best for her, but that's not what Asuka wants. Yeah, and okay, like, so that's I my need thing. to be my <laughs> own person, Mom. I'm 12 years old. I can make my own decisions. <laughs> I gotta Jerk. leave the nest sometime, Mom. Yeah. I'm 12 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, all of these kids, like, there is a problem. There is a problem <laughs> with these kids. I, I don't know if there's a draft of this story where they are older when they go into the program. But it doesn't make sense that Trina is an influencer with like a million followers. Oh my god! I, I, I mean, I guess they're all they're all no, prodigies. She was an influencer when she was a baby. You see, she her mom. Uh, but she used to kind of had to be the baby pics, and now she's grown up, and she's definitely not being followed by a bunch of creepy weirdos. Yeah, there you go. She's an influencer. Ben. Okay. My, my point is like all these kids come in as like giant prodigies and they all seem to have lived like a significant life at the age of 12. Yeah. They all have political stances. And Asuka's put in advanced robotics because she's like, I mean, I, I, I was on the robotics team. Like, you know, I, 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 I could probably do it. And the now, was that at the, like, at the, at the baby school for uh, building connects. No, no. Were you, were you at the robot uh, thing at the FEMA camp or the the yes. rural Japanese village? Yes, to both of those things. There was a pretty robust robot thing at that FEMA camp. I don't know if you realize that. When and, the hell did any of this stuff happen? Well, Ben, I was getting to that, but it doesn't matter because Asuka finds out she is way out of her depth because the robotics teacher's like uh if you guys don't already know how to make nano machines that replicate themselves uh and it, like you might as well just drop out vehicle. and die now but i guess okay yeah if you guys can't do what elon musk does right now by making he, autonomous cars all by himself let's um, let's, let's pause well you right there quit. nate if you can't do what Elon Musk can't do right now, <laughs> which is make a fully self-driving car. And yeah, that's an attack. Tesla fucking sucks. Okay. You might as well just drop out of this program now because you're never going to get any better, you 12-year-old garbage people. I guess it makes sense for it to be that competitive. I, what I don't understand is how they haven't weeded out like... Racists? The psych... The, and, yeah, the racists. Terrorists. The psychological problems this would cause, like... You People have who to just know. want to be J-pop stars, who have, who have probably forty hours in every single day to just like compose music on the side on top of all their schoolwork and sleeping. Okay, real quick, can we talk about the no. complete, um, the complete lack of security surveillance? Ben, if there were security and surveillance outside of the ship's AI, who always watches them while they poop then there would be no mystery to solve, Ben. So they didn't foresee any need in a crew of 80 no. people. No, they didn't even have a Mayflower compact to have some sort of law and order on this ship, Ben. And people seem to just take the captain's orders as, like, suggestions or something sometimes. It's really, you know, not how I would run a ship, but I'm not Teflana Musk, so... There's no security yeah, that's my for us. They have a an Ansible device, some kind of quantum communicator that allows them to instantaneously communicate with Earth. Yeah, and it would really suck if that were in a very vulnerable position and were damaged in some way because it is irreplaceable, Ben. And there are no backups. That cost over half of our budget, which was a trajillion, billion, gajillion dollars. Like, dude, which... I don't know if you know this, but I had to pay an extra 40% on my income tax this last year so that we could get seats on this ship and build a quantum communicator. So, like, you know, don't break that. That's a lot of my money, my taxpayer money, being shat on if that happens. So I would say that this sort of thing would probably disqualify me from being on the ship in the first place, aside from the fact that I'm male. 
I don't even answer my email. Oh. You think I'm I'm reading your your quantum communication? I don't care what you say. Ben, mission control. Ben, mission we control. Can still salvage. I am the, I'm the president of Planet X now. Okay, I don't take any yeah. fucking orders from you. <laughs> no one thinks about that actually until later, where they're like, "Wait, what can the Earth even do to us?" It's like, yeah, exactly. Ben, Ben, <laughs> not checking your email might disqualify you. So quick, be a space racist. That will help you out a lot. I routinely get messages at work that are like, hey, did you see my email? And I was like, just now. Yep. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> I hate email. I am infamous for hating email. Every job I have ever worked at. If my name is not, if it doesn't say hi, Ben, it's not for me. <laughs> I am put on emails at work with like literally, literally 150. I'm not reading that. Yeah, my previous boss wouldn't have liked you because he would have texted you an hour later and would have been like, did you read that email? He would have messaged you. He wouldn't have gotten a response. <laughs> Ask my mom how often I answer the phone. <laughs> it's not better. <laughs> You know what it's like. Like, we agree on a time to do this podcast. I will respond to you within, like, five minutes of that time. <laughs> Anything oh, other it's than militia that, it's... for the American Constitution. Holy shit, I wrote it down. There you go. Is there anything else we want to cover on this episode? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think so, I... like, okay, Asuka's miserable, right? But, like, yeah. As Asuka's miserable. Ruth sucks. Yeah. Um, but she's like got Ruth that just... quirky, charming, uh, I don't take shit from nobody attitude that is, you just love. No, she. <laughs> I she have... also might be an environmental terrorist, Ben. I don't know. R Ruth, which, yeah. <laughs> How was that allowed? I made sure nobody took pictures of us, even though we're like celebrities now, Ben. They're not going to know that we're you're wearing, out you're hanging wearing, out with environmental terrorists. You're wearing a location device. Hell, I'm carrying a location device in my pocket right now. They would be tracking me if I registered for this highly specialized school where anything I did had the potential to be an international incident. You don't think they're not tracking their 15, 16-year-old children? Ben, Ben. They spent all the money on the quantum communicator. They didn't have enough money to track my phone, okay? And that's the other fucking thing about the quantum communicator. <laughs> the qu <laughs> What is this sense of urgency? Why do we have to go right now? Why can't we build the quantum communicator, have it for a minute, build a couple, okay? Make the technology cheap. Let it mature a minute. Like, why do we have to, like... Teflon Musk has an idea for a generation ship, and we just got to go right now. We just got to go with everything we got right now, even because though the Earth is in no imminent danger. that's how we're going to bring us all together, Ben. It, everyone, World War III humanity, happens five minutes humanity after Humanity is coming together, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> we're saving the human race by showing what we can do when we work together. Don't mind the fact that World War Three just happened. Just, shh, 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 go back to sleep. Shh. Okay. Ultimately, I get. I'm trying to think of everything I want to get out there before we talk about the murder mystery because we can't come back to any of this. We'll never get anywhere. <laughs> to sum up, I guess my main problem with this. <laughs> And a lot of recent sci-fi has been it predicts technological advancement without any social or cultural advancement. I do not, at the end of the day, believe that a society that is so close to our current society could achieve something like this aside from the fact that with our current technology it's impossible 
And with our technology in the next hundred years, it will still be impossible. If we can't what fix Teflon our environment, mask? go on. <laughs> what if she solves that problem by just being that damn smart and gifted, Ben? <laughs> okay. Well, if we could do this, we could fix the environment. If we could do this, we could colonize the solar system. If we could do this, we could have free floating space colonies just orbiting the planet where we could offload surplus population. Like, to achieve something like this ship, you would either need, which a lot of sci-fi uses, an emergency where the human species is going to go extinct if we don't do this one last-ditch effort thing, like an asteroid is heading for the planet Earth, we can't stop it for some reason. Or you need a post-scarcity society where everyone is so well taken care of that they don't mind hemorrhaging resources. At the time this is happening, literally, Asuka is recruited, like, Asuka will wind up being recruited twice, basically. But the second time, she is recruited from a cake shop where she is spending her food rations to get a piece of cake. She's using, like, two days worth of rations on a piece of cake. This is the society, this Japan, that is rationing cake is the Japan that paid hundreds of billions of dollars for a seat, one seat, on a spacecraft going to nowhere that they will never see any return on. The whole motivating factor, which is never questioned for a second, seems to be the ego of nations to simply be represented if a new planet is going to be colonized and no one, no reasonable person points out that that is just what it is. It's pure ego. There is no moral justification for this project. It is a farce. That's my summation that every point I am making is derivative from that premise that this society did not do this. You can't have both. Next week, we'll talk about why the murder mystery also doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Ben. I didn't want to be so hard on this. Yeah, the, like I, I was definitely nicer to it in my uh, review, but. There's moments I'm... that work, there are chapters that work. Like, A short story on any of these topics from Yume Katase would be welcome. Like, I I think she has a voice. I think she has a lot to say. And I don't think she's a bad writer. It's just so much. She's trying to, like, put every idea she has into this. And... Yeah, it needs to like really focus in on something. I and agree. I think that's that I agree. But I think that's evidenced by like if you read reviews of this book, it like you could read five reviews and it's like you're you're reading a review of five different books. Like people are reviewing aspects of this book that are not in the text. And I I, I think that's fascinating. And if you want to know where I got this book, it was from, it was, I kept seeing it nominated for best sci-fi novel of the year last year. I guess best new sci-fi novel. And I, eh. all right, wrap it up. Stop me talking. Yep. Let's, let's Pokemon go to the end, Ben. God damn it. <laughs> Our patrons. Jamie, the gravy man. You can go check him out at ifyouwantthegravy.wordpress.com where he will tell you his picks for the Oscars. He'll talk about the Oscars and then he'll do the gravies, which from what I understand are more prestigious and important than the Oscars themselves. You've got John Bierce, an actual real author. You should go check out his Patreon. He also has uh, both actual writing works in the form of 
the Mage Errant series and the Rack. He also has something new coming out at the end of next month. More on that later. Stay tuned. There's also Brad, a.k.a. Isekai Sensei-sama at that time I got reincarnated in the same world as an anime podcaster podcast. And then there's Shy with a Y. You check her out on Instagram. And Hillary, if you're listening to this, Ben is accepting donations for his presidential run. So, you know, maybe help us out a little bit. Kick in a few million dollars over here or whatever. Goodbye. Okay,